using fakes with ASP.NET MVC. ASP.NET MVC was built upon ASP.NET. ASP.NET has many highly coupled classes that can be hard to test. Where we want to isolate the system under test from potential dependencies from other ASP.NET MVC components, we can use fakes. Stubs. If we want to test the MVC controller class, we can isolate it using stubs. The most common way to do this is to inject a repository through the controller's constructor using an interface. In the next sample we have an order controller that gets injected with an order repository through an order repository interface. The repository is then used to update and save the order. The interface defines two methods, insert or update, and save. To test this controller using stubs, we need to create a fakes assembly from the assembly containing the repository interface. We can then create a stub that gets injected into the constructor of the controller. We use lambda expressions to intercept the function calls to the insert or update and save functions and ignores the implementations of these functions and simply sets the two local variables to true after the function stubs have been successfully called. Let's have a look at the classes and interfaces used in this solution. In the MVC controller project, we find the classes folder that contain an order class that has an order ID property. In the interfaces folder, we find the iOrder repository interface that will be implemented in the repository classes and contain the two method insert or update and save. The order controller has a private read only property of type iOrder repository that will hold the instance passed in through the constructor. The property will later be used in the create action. The create action takes an order instance. The first thing that is done in this action is to check that the model state is valid. Inside that if statement we use the order repository instance that was passed in through the constructor to call the insert or update and the save functions. Testing function calls made in an action that resides in a controller can be a bit tricky. To circumvent this problem, we create a fakes assembly based on the order controller and use stubs to implement our own functions in the test method. In our test project, we find the test class, order controller test, in the controllers folder. The class has two private properties, one to hold the stubbed instance of the iOrder repository and want to hold the order controller instance that we need to test the actual controller. We have a test initialize function that is run before any tests are run. In this function we create an instance of the stub iOrder repository that we assign to the private class level variable. We also create an instance of the order repository to which we pass the instance of the stubbed repository. In the test method, we have two boolean variables that will keep track of if the functions in the controller have been called. We use lambda expressions to substitute the functions in the stub repository. In the save function, a value is simply set to the isSaveCalled variable. In the insert or update function, we set the isInsert or update called variable, as well as assigning a value to the order ID property of the order instance. Now that the setup for the test function is complete, we can act by creating a new order instance and pass it into the create method of the order controller instance. Keep in mind that the create method has access to the stub repository because we passed it into the constructor of our order controller. After the call, we will assert that the order ID is greater than zero and that the two variables are set to true. Remember that we assigned the order ID inside the lambda function that replaced the insert or update function. When debugging this test function, you will see that the order ID actually is set to 1, which means that the insert or update function was called. If we run the test completely, you can see in the test explorer that it has passed. Shims. 
Sometimes it's impossible to use interface injection or create new interfaces to make testing easier. In these cases, shims can be an option. With the shims, we intercept the call and reroute it to our own implementation. One such case could be to verify a login scenario using forms authentication in the account controller. To test this code using shims, you need to create a fakes assembly for the system web assembly. In this example, we are going to have a look at how we can use shims to intercept function calls. We start by looking at the controller. The function that we are interested in is the login function that takes two parameters, login model and return URL. The login model contains three properties, username, password, and remember me. In the login function, we make two calls to security related functions. One to validate that the user is a member and one to set an authentication cookie. These two system functions are the functions that we will shim and create our own implementations of because we don't want to use the system implementations of these functions. Now let's have a look at how we can shim the functions in the test project. Remember that you need to fake the system web assembly to create the necessary shims. We navigate to the test project's controllers folder and open the account controller test class. In our test method, we start by creating a login model that contains values for the username, password and remember me properties. We also have two variables that will be set if the authentication and validation methods are called. To shim the desired functions, we need to create a shim context in a using statement. Remember that we don't want to create shim context in initialization methods because we don't know what happens between function calls. Within the using block, we shim the validate function by creating a lambda expression that sets the isValidate user called variable to true. We also shim the authentication method in which we assert if the passed in username and password are equal to the model values. Then we set the isAuthentication called variable to true. Now we are ready to act. We begin by creating an instance of the account controller that contains the login method we want to test. Then we call the login method, passing in the model and the return URL. When calling the login method, the shimmed methods will be called instead of the system methods. Outside the shim context's using block, we assert that the isValidate user called and the isAuthentication called variables have been set to true. 